just going to be a walkthrough video of the CW3000 water clarification system. This is a V-bottom rectangular clarifier with a 50 horsepower screw designed to separate solids from water. We've got a dry polymer system in here. This is a model 500 stainless steel dry polymer system. Up here we've got an autoflock dosing system. PLC and HMI controls for the clarifier itself. So you've got the screw, the seal pump, the knife gate, and the mud pump. Currently they're not using this turbidimeter. You can see we're flowing about 2,500 gallons per minute. Everything's automated on timers. And the polymer dosing is automated with the autoflock and our dry polymer system. The dry polymer is loaded here from 55 pound bags and mixed to a quarter percent solution aged and then pumped into the process with these two dosing pumps. Once we've prepared the flocculant, we introduce it into the slurry. The slurry comes from these wash plants over here. Again, 2,800 gallons per minute. All the flow from both wash plants comes down to this sump location. We've got a vertical turbine slurry pump here. And that's providing the flow to the clarifier. And it's introduced in these lines here to the slurry pipe, which is here. We've got clean outs for the screw if there is a clogging event. This is a 41,000 gallon tank. It ships in two halves and we've got a rubber gasket between them and it bolts together. Stair axis to the top with handrails. Here you can see the flow coming in from the wash plant. The mud comes in. Oh, we've actually got mud discharging currently on this side. Let's take a look at that. He's told me he's got it set up to run real thin. We can go much thicker than this, but he actually had an issue with the mud building up on this side of this mud storage pit. This is made for storage and dewatering. You can see the weir box at the end is designed to decant any excessive water. Thicker is better in mud storage, so what they're talking about doing for next season is actually setting up a couple of different discharge points on a header so they can run this mud much thicker. But as for now, they've been very satisfied with what they've been able to do. As you can see in this mud storage pit, they've been able to come in with an excavator and remove the mud. You can see, uh, if you've ever operated an excavator, to see that ridge in the middle, you can obviously see the reach wasn't quite long enough to catch that, but the fact that it stood up like that in the middle is evidence of a very uh, solid mud, certainly Solid enough to put in a haul truck, and they were able to do that. Can't see it from here. We might be able to see it over yonder. Anyways, once the mud settled out, you're left with the clean water. And that clean water, then gravity flows through this, I believe it's a 20 inch pipe, to 
the clean water storage down there and it's ready for reuse. This is a closed loop system. These are the waste finds from that first pit after they've been excavated. Whatever you call this stuff, finds, tailings, pace, sludge, you know it's a mess. Uh, but this is really good material here. They've been able to push this up. They've been able to haul it out. You can see even just the way it came out of the haul truck. You can tell it was fairly solidified. You're not seeing too many runs or you can tell this was able to be stacked up here and, and stayed put pretty well. This is consistent with the mud we see in uh, clarifier discharge because it doesn't have as much water in it. So it, it's easy to handle, it doesn't require as much volume for storage, and it's going to dry out a lot faster because it's just starting with a higher solids content. Here's a look at the mud removal system in this clarifier. We're centered on the tank. The screw is going to pull the settled material to the central location. We've got a pneumatic knife gate here and a mud pump coming out to a T with these two gate valves that are going to allow the settled material to flow to either mud cell. We've designed these mud cells with enough volume to last, last for at least four weeks. So we're getting a lot of storage and then a lot of dewatering before we have to flip flop back and forth. Again, this customer is purposefully running this pretty thin as to allow the material to flow all the way. So they've talked about adding these different discharge points so they can run it much thicker. You want to maximize your mud volume storage because you're allowing for more time for the sludge to further dewater. Now down here, we've got the decanted water and they've set up these weir boxes with a sump pump to flow back into their clean water pond. Here's the clean water pond. This is the gravity discharge from the clarifier itself. So this is about 2,500 gallons per minute of good clean water. They've got two clean water pumps. Uh, they can run independently, and one's for each of these wash plants here. You can see we're maintaining a really nice clean water for these guys. I don't know if you can tell the bottom does have some solids on it, but I can see probably 18 inches to two feet with it, right into this water. So we know from experience that this water is well below 30 NTU, certainly good enough to wash uh, stoning sand with. And then this green hose here is where they're recovering the water from the sludge, the decant water off the mud. So this is a completely closed loop system. They are topping off with makeup water, which is always gonna be required for your loss in the mud and loss in evaporation in the product itself has moisture in it. So you are gonna need water here, but this is a great example of a closed loop wash water circuit.